Hey guys, welcome to part two of this uh, series here. And this time we're gonna use Nuke Camera Projections to project AI generated images to create a 3D DMP effect with this hole in the ground. Now, these are pretty standard camera workflows or camera projection workflows rather in Nuke. So even if you're kind of new to camera projections or DMP, this will be useful for you. I just think that the added element of generative AI on top of this uh, and generating potentially from different angles to fix the stretching that happens with camera projections is an interesting evolution of this workflow. And so that's kind of what this was, uh, the purpose of this, uh, doing this project for me was to just see if this is a viable workflow. And I do think it is. So first I'm gonna show you what I did from the first camera projection. I rendered out a still image from Nuke using TVI scale first to reformat it to be twice the size. It's a little bit better than just a reformat note. So if you type in TVI scale, you'll find that. I just wanted to start with a higher res so that the generative AI would have something better to work with and potentially give higher res textures that we can downscale later. And so this was the base, just the grass kind of clean plated from our one of our previous videos. And if you're not familiar with the Photoshop workflow of how to use generative AI, I check out the last video I just posted, which kind of shows the way that I think this is gonna be most useful. So I'm not gonna recover those topics that I already did. So just to show the layers though, in case anyone wants to see, this was the first layer giving it some prompts. I think what was the prompt here? It was deep hole in the ground, artillery hole in the ground, grass hanging on the edge of the hole, chunks of dirt. And it gave this weird rock in the center, but this side was actually pretty good. And so I just continue generating here, circle out that rock and then try it again. And that's giving some pretty decent results right off the bat, but I did want to make it bigger. And so employing the techniques I mentioned in the last video, I kind of clone stamp roughly down and you can see the edge is all soft and it's not very well integrated, but that's not really what we're worried about because we just need to hint at the eye what we're trying to do. And so if you generate on top of that, we can clean up that edge and it does all the work for us to get that nice grass and stuff hanging over the edge. And so I think that was the remainder of the layers. I think I adjusted a little bit further and that was the first pass. Now, if I take that image and I project it in Nuke, I projected it on the lighter scan, the flattened one that I did in the previous video. It could also just be a flat card, um, pretty much was just a flat card in terms of the shape of it. But if you project that out from the beginning frame where I painted it and put it on, that's our hole in 3D. And if I play, you'll see that we have a projection. Now you see immediately the problems that are associated with projections. Um, we see it starts to stretch towards the end and stuff like that, but it is tracking well and we have everything in, the, in a good starting place. And so this is what I wanted to experiment with was is to go further in the frame range and generate again, except from a different angle to see if we can fix this stretching effect that is normally happening. And that's a normal workflow for DMP anyway, to project images from different angles. But if we can generate it, it should save us some time. So the next thing I did was take that stretch projection frame and I rendered it out and I extended it with another generative AI to see what will be down below in the hole because we know the hole is not flat on the surface. So we want to see everything underneath and then we're going to patch it again over the top. So this is the back wall and the ground is what we're trying to create. And so the first result was weird. It looked like an egg yolk or something. So I changed it. I also wanted to see more on the wall of the grass to see if we could get more layers of parallax. Cause if we just see the back wall, it's going to feel a bit 2D. So part of the trick of this, I, I wanted to get like the edge wall that will overlap on the back wall. So if you can get at least three layers, it's going to feel a bit more 3D. So that's where understanding parallax is important but just a bit more painting here and just generative fills. So you can see the process of just some different layers here, try to get something better on the bottom. And I also even took some areas that I thought were good, like over here, I just cut this out and flipped it and then put this here and generate around it. And again, it's the same technique as the last video. When it has something on the edge to touch, it's gonna give results that blend nicely with that edge. And so uh, just keep doing that over and over. It kept wanting to generate these giant sticks for some reason. So that was something that it kept having a problem with, but it's not a perfect tool yet, but it is a tool that you can uh, certainly use. So a little bit of manual clone stamping, clone stamping here and then just um, finishing it up at the end. And that was the back wall and the floor. So this is another thing that we're going to project in new. So again, this is looking at the stretch projection and then this is bringing in the new image with the generated from a new angle. And then I just did a bit of corrections on this layer, adjusting the perspective a bit to match better, some small comp brightness adjustments and things like that, and cut it out with a roto. So we give it an alpha and we pre-multiply that. And essentially after that, we wanna project it onto not just a flat cylinder, but we wanna create something that will give the illusion or enough breaking up of that parallax so we read it as a rough surface. So what I took was a cylinder 
and I lined it up with that LiDAR Geo so I could see the other projection if I load the other projection here. And so that's what this looks like. And then I just took a some noise patterns and stuff like that with the displaced geo to get the broken up edge and lined it up with the, where the back wall would be. And so we get the side walls and we get the broken up feeling. And I did a merge geo with another cylinder for the bottom. So that would be the ground plane of the bottom of the hole. And so that's what that starts to look like. And another card with a displaced geo, just to give the wall a bit closer to the camera so we feel more parallax. If we can get some things closer and some things further, we're gonna feel that distance a bit more. And so if we merge that over, that's what we get. And now you notice we're seeing underground right now. So after this, we're gonna add back the top of the grass. So if we add that layer back over, that's what that looks like. So we're starting to cover up back on the top area. And I'll go through that now, this top layer. So the top layer is actually being branched off from the original projection. So we have the original projection, we have the back wall and the bottom being merged in. I also did a little bit of sidewall geo there. And so that's the thing that we're seeing. But here I've branched off the pipe here to create a new sort of patch that we're gonna create. And how we do this is we actually just, because this is the way that this generated was the grass was over this something dark, it's pretty easy to create an alpha. We can just key it out with a Luma keyer. So we get this alpha here and I solidified it a little bit. And if we pre-multiply, that's gonna be the patch that we put over the top, again, on that flat top ground plane that we already have. So if I mask this out, this is what we're slapping over the top. And I did add a little bit more around. So I took a branch off here, gave it a solid alpha, and I masked that just to give some more grass and stuff like that around. We wouldn't necessarily have to project all of this area, but this is just fast and I'm just putting a patch over. So I put this over the top like this. So these are the two things that we're gonna project onto a ground plane. One important thing to note here is I did a little bit of a unpremalt a roto paint and a pre-malt, and that's gonna fix some dark edges on the grass. If I compare, let's go to frame, I think it's one, actually we could just do this frame. Let's just check this frame. And I'll just disable that correction and enable. So that's just an, a simple edge fix because we had that semi-transparent grass over the darkness, we're gonna have dark edges. So that's how you would fix that. It's actually similar to what I teach in my keying class with the edge painting and edge fixes, a very common workflow to just extend the edges. So on pre-malt, we paint, but only in the RGB, and then we pre-malt again. And then just some more corrections to fix some stretching, a little bit of sharpening, because sometimes the AI will generate some softer and some sharper details, and you need to blend those things together. And then we have something like this. We project it out, and that's gonna move with our image. Now, one extra thing I did here, and this is it, pretty cool to know and useful, is towards the end of the sequence, this started to stretch a little bit. You can see it's horizontally stretched. It's the same thing we were seeing before. Remember, when you're looking at the projection, it looks a bit stretched when we go further and further. And so one way you can actually fix that is to not just project onto a flat surface because we know that maybe some of this grass is hanging over the edge. And so what I did here to prevent some of that stretching was essentially just take a card and displace it with a ramp. So if you take a black and white ramp, you're saying that we wanna bend part of the card and not bend the other part. And so what that does is we can ignore this part that's straight up. But if we look just at the end here, what we're actually doing is just trying to get a bit of a bend and that's what I'm projecting the grass onto. So rather than projecting on a flat card on the surface, we're just getting a little bit of that bend and that's gonna change the perspective of the projection as time goes on. And that's gonna actually help prevent that stretching. So there's different ways to do that. Like I mentioned in the clean planning tutorial, posted two videos ago, you can do eye transforms. There's different techniques you can do to prevent or distort things in different ways when you're dealing with projections and that's one way we can do it. And so now we merge this over the top and we have something that's covering up those areas and that's working pretty well. Now the rest of these little projections and patches you see in the script here are just corrective patches, dissolves and stuff like that. And that's the techniques I talked about in the clean plating tutorial two videos ago. So if you're new to clean plating, projections, all those things, I'd recommend checking out Nuke 202 because that really dives into the 3D system and getting comfortable with those things. And so that's linked in the description as well. But that's about it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys found this useful and you can start to apply this in other creative ways. I think there are a lot of other creative ways. I've been experimenting with this on different projects and I've seen a lot of interesting things that we can do with this if you start to think outside the box a little bit. And so this is just one test I've done, but I do think that this scale 
entails into a lot of different scenarios that are very interesting. So if you liked it, press the like, comment, tell me what you think about this workflow as well, if you've experimented with this at all. And uh, that's about it.